those bastards don't even come close to my heels. They they take more than 20 centimeters and more than 10 kilos and they can't do anything against me. Iron Mike's matches were fierce, exciting, and so amazing that the spectators could not stop seeing them for a single second. Nobody could believe the genius that Mike Tyson had in his gloves, a guy of 1.80 who broke any skull that got in his way. It didn't matter if his enemy exceeded his weight and height by far, there was simply no one who could match him. Compare. He never backed down against the boxing monsters and giants he that he came to face, even though the odds were against him. Larry Holmes is possibly one of the most underrated boxers in the history, despite being one of only two fighters to achieve an undefeated streak of 48 victories, in addition to having remained the heavyweight champion to world level, and having been the only person in history to have defeated the Muhammad Ali himself in a technical knockout in a very humiliating way. This the latter, although it would end up consolidating Larry's career, would cause a little young man who would swear to avenge the defeat of the people's champion, this would be Mike Tyson that he would have no problem fighting for the championship title on the 22nd of January, 1988 with Larry Holmes. Despite his noble words, Mike Tyson was at a disadvantage as he against someone 13 centimeters taller than him and who had 10 kilograms more than him, plus Larry had much more experience in the ring. The Tyson's main advantage would be precisely his youth and agility, which would be key to defeat the fighter who possessed one of the deadliest blows in the history of the boxing. So, after Larry went two years without being in a fight, ended up accepting after agreeing a payment for participating for three million dollars, but although it seemed that Larry's experience and skill would give him an advantage, in the end, this only served him to be able to withstand the blows that his adversary gave him. Led From the start, Mike went all out against his opponent, performing a complex series of attacks that Larry received with almost no opportunity to do anything further. Despite being smaller, Mike Tyson was superior at all times, until the point that in the fourth round he managed to knock down Larry not once, not twice, but three times Holmes, causing the referee to stop the fight and declare Iron Mike the winner. This victory finished cementing Mike Tyson as a boxing prodigy, being the first and only time Larry Holmes would lose by TKO in his entire career. In addition to the fact that many would use this battle as an argument to discuss whether Iron Mike could have beaten Muhammad Ali in his prime. The Lion versus the Baddest Man on the Planet, that was the fight between Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson, named as one of the most anticipated fights in history of boxing. This fight brought together boxing fans, ordinary people, big athletes and celebrities from all media in the same room, all watching with emotion who was the person who was crowned with the title of the greatest champion of heavyweight around the world. Encouragement that the same fighters encouraged with their disagreements that led to several physical altercations during their conferences pressed to promote themselves. Tyson, with his characteristic height of 178, had at that time one of the heaviest weights in their history at 234 pounds. Still, Lennox continued to have superior dimensions with his height of 196 centimeters and his weight of 249 pounds. But if something Mike Tyson had shown by then is that it didn't matter if he faced great and colossal beasts, he will continue to give his all until the end to seize victory. Thus, it was on June 8, 2002 when this confrontation took place between Titans. 
As soon as the battle began, a rather atypical behavior of Tyson who, instead of going all in as he usually does, preferred to keep a distance with his adversary and defending himself from the blows, while he was Lennox Lewis who took advantage of his intimidating height and strength to hit and shoot a strong combination of jams and direct uppercuts in the face of Kid Dynamite. In the following rounds, Mike Tyson returned to his wildest style and stood up from in front of the Leon to attack them with a series of combos of blows, which were responded with the same intensity. Although, in the end, Tyson was defeated as rarely seen in his career, being knocked down in the fourth round. After that assault, Lewis's superiority was more than clear, achieving defend against each blow that his adversary formed. It all culminated in the eighth round, when Mike Tyson was hit by a hard right cross from Lennox Lewis who dropped him for the second time in the entire bout, marking a win by KO for the Lion of Boxing. Although not even in this situation the fans of Tyson was left alone as they gave their idol a standing ovation to cheer him up. And just as Mike Tyson's fans supported him first and foremost, you can support us the same and help us grow if you leave a like on this video and share, so we will know that you like our content, and if you would like us to talk about other fighters feel free to tell us in the comment box. It was 2001 and, for many, the golden age of the beloved Iron Mike had already passed, but the fighter still did his best to continue to prove his worth, and for that decided to face Brian Nielsen, a boxer who at the time had one of the best streaks in boxing history of 62-1. to 1. This seemed to place things quite even with Tyson who, although he was defeated several times, he built a reputation for his strength, capable of taking down most his enemies in a knockout. Brian Nielsen knew what he was up against, and so to show he didn't have him fear, the 1 meter 90 boxer and 250 pounds came to offend his opponent in competition, even calling out serious racial slurs. Although this, instead of affecting Mike Tyson, only motivated him to release a forceful statement, I will punish him harder than I thought, denoting that he had some nerve steel and does not let anyone intimidate, it does not matter if it is stronger and bigger than he. Thus, on March 13, 2001, both boxers met face to face at the ring. From the first round, Tyson honored his great ferocity and attacked with all his might, who could only defend himself and try to walk away. But things would not be so easy, since the winner of the Olympic Games would take advantage of his great resistance to tire Mike Tyson and take advantage to give him a forceful jam and right in the second round. However, the Kid Dynamite would not give up and would manage to turn the fight around in the next round, throwing Brian Nielsen to the floor, a feat only one fighter accomplished before. Mike Tyson kept his promise, and the following rounds he spent torturing his opponent to the maximum, getting to cut Brian Nielsen's eye. In addition to land a blow to the lower parts that I need to recover for. Yes, okay. This was a mistake that lowered Tyson's points. It almost seems like it was an act of karma that the Norwegian had to live for his racial offenses. At the end of the sixth round, the giant had to surrender, giving the great Mike Tyson another victory by knockout. Although this, after experiencing one of the longest lasting battles in his entire career against one of the most physically superior adversaries to him, and he chose not to continue. The sound and the fury that was the name by which it was originally known this match between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, who was taller than Tyson by 10 centimeters despite having the same weight. A pretty honorable fight between two of the boxers of the moment, which would become one of the fights most controversial in all of history and, unfortunately, almost cost the race too. Despite the fact that bout was made to determine the WBA heavyweight champion, many they were confident of Tyson's victory, since Evander had not had a good run since he came out of retirement in 1995. Despite the foregoing, when the fight began on June 28th, 
1997, all they were shocked when it was Evander Holyfield who managed to put against the ropes to Mike Tyson, managing to defend himself from the aggressive style that makes so much highlight Tyson without much inconvenience, and returning several blows. This it was something that bothered Tyson, and when his opponent managed to knock him down, the boxer he brought out his worst side when he bit Evander Holyfield's ear. Of course, such an action would get Tyson penalized for his behavior. Unsportsmanlike, though the fight would go on, although the bite could have disconcerted to Evander, he was, rather, he continued to show himself superior in everything moment, which would lead to Mike Tyson biting his ear again at the end of the round 11. So that confrontation had to be stopped to disqualify Mike Tyson, declaring Evander Holyfield the winner at the encounter that would go down in history as the fight of the bite. In a 25-year career, it's a fact that Mike Tyson may not always have been the person with the greatest advantage, but it doesn't matter who his determination always allowed him to emerge victorious against authentic boxing beasts, and even if he did not win each of his battles, his great charisma did allow him win the hearts of his public on more than one occasion, and the respect of those stronger and bigger than him.